Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It is three o'clock, so we will be getting started now uh, with purposes of time in mind. Uh, so today we're going to be going through Google Slides and Google Drive and showing you some of the skills that relate to those Google products. Before we get started, we do want to introduce ourselves. I'm Todd Ranke. I am the DJ. Sorry if you didn't like the songs. If you did like them, you can hire me for weddings or birthdays. Um, also with me today is Catherine Wall. Uh, I do work at the middle school level um, and then help out at a couple of high schools as well. Uh, Catherine Wall will be here today uh, and introduce herself next. Hi, Catherine Wall. I work primarily at the elementary school level and do some work at the middle school level as well. Happy to be here with you guys. Nice to see you again if you were just in our last session. All right. Thank you, Catherine. So today we are going to be going through slides and drive. And before we get into that, we do want to just show you a couple of things to make sure we're all set to go, the little logistical things. In the upper right corner, most of you have done this, but there is that comments area that looks like the thought bubble. If you could click there to enter your first and last name, we will be using that for attendance purposes to get it in MLP, which will allow you then to get the hours you would need for this professional learning or maybe even EE. It looks like most of you have done so, but if you haven't, down towards the bottom, if you could just mute your microphone, that will help us get through this a little bit more efficiently and uh, get it done quicker for you. Uh, some people are choosing to turn their cameras off. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, you can do that if you would like, but you do not need to. In the upper left corner, you'll notice that we are recording this meeting. Uh, that's so we can get you a, a video of everything we go over. Uh, we did also email you an outline of everything we go over today. So please feel free to use that outline with the video if you go over anything and practice these skills. Uh, we hope that you'll find it helpful. Uh, so later today, you'll get a follow-up email with that video and some other items as well, which we'll talk about at the end of our training. Um, for some of the logistical purposes, we just wanted to let you know that this is a study session for Slides and Drive, and we'll be going over some of the skills involved with those products. It's not necessarily to give you uh, answers or things like that to that Google certification test you're working towards. That's not something Catherine or I are able to do. Uh, we sign non-disclosure agreements when we take that test. Uh, that's something you'll have to sign as well when you work towards taking that test. So again, really today we're going to be going over those skills that help you learn and understand slides and drive to better utilize them in that school setting. Um, we'll help you on those skills. Uh, we'll talk some of the specifics and we'll try and answer questions at the end. We hope we'll have time for that. If you do not get your question answered or you have specifics related to the program or your school, you can always uh, reach out to your technology integrator. Uh, if you're looking for more things related to that Google certification after you take this class, you would want to make sure to go to that Google Teacher Center and look at those modules. And that's actually something we'll send out in that email as well. There are times where we feel like sometimes for you, this will feel maybe a little fast paced. It could even feel like overwhelming at times. We hope it won't. But if it does, please again, feel free to use that outline we're providing you and the video that we send you uh, later today because we feel like that will be helpful for you. Uh, Catherine, is there anything that you think I missed logistically before we get started? Um, a couple of things I would add. In that chat feature, Todd and I are going to be taking turns going back and forth answering questions. If you could avoid responding to one another, that just makes it a, le a little bit easier for us to follow. Um, too many responses makes that chat feed go up too quickly and we can't keep track of our questions. We don't want to miss anybody. Um, the only other thing, we've been having some issues with Google Meet today. Our last session, several people were kicked out. I know somebody in this session already already was kicked out. Um, if that happens to you, no worries, not a big deal with your attendance, just exit the screen and then go back, click on your Meet link again, and it'll bring you right back in. So nothing to be concerned about. All right, thank you. So we will be getting started. Uh, how this will work today is Catherine will take you through that Google Slides portion uh, of the outline. And so when she's taking you through that on her screen, I'll do my best to answer your questions in that chat area. And then we'll make a switch about halfway through. And then I'll take over and I'll share my screen. We'll show you Google Drive. And then Catherine will do her best at that point to answer any questions in the chat. And then again, we hope for some time at the end for questions on the microphone. 
So at this point, we'll turn it over to Catherine and get started. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Todd. All right, we are gonna try to get through a lot of content here in a short amount of, of time. As Todd mentioned, it, it may feel overwhelming, um, but to help you with that, we will be sending you a recording of today's session. And you do also have your checklist there to reference as well. Todd, can you see my screen? Yeah, good to go. Okay, so, whoa. Okay, I'm gonna follow straight down the outline that we provided you with. So if you have it next to you, feel free to use those check boxes to um, kind of keep track as to where we at, where we are at. First things first, there are several ways to get into a Google Slides presentation. One way is to go up to your Omni box right here and type in slides.new. And then this will open up a brand new slides presentation for you. You can also open up a slides presentation through your Google Drive. You can open up a slides presentation through your little waffle icon that's in your Gmail. It's in all of your other Google applications. Um, and you can also open it up through Google Slides on your ClassLink page. So I'm not going to go through and show you how to do all of those today. You can use that that outline there as reference. So everything that we're gonna show you today, there are multiple ways, usually at least two up to four, or maybe even greater ways to complete a task. I'm gonna show you some of the different ways. I may not cover every single way. Most of them are outlined on that, that agenda that we gave you guys in your email today. Um, but just know that there's, there's no one, one right way to do something. So you're gonna kinda do with whatever you're comfortable with. When you open up a new slides presentation, you are gonna get this. It's gonna be a blank presentation for you to start with. I'm gonna close this out, and I kind of created one for me to use today for demonstration purposes. <clears throat> the first slide here, it was just a plain white background, and all I did was I added a background in, image to it. So right now, this is just a background image. There's nothing that's manipulatable here or um, movable or changeable so that's kind of it's a wallpaper it's stuck back on my slide the first thing that we're going to cover today is how to insert a shape all the tasks for this slide are are listed here on the bottom in these speaker notes and everything that we're going to cover for this slide right here is all going to be up here in this insert button again this is one way to do all these tasks but there's multiple ways to do it so the first thing we want to do is insert a shape one of the ways that we can do that is by going up to insert and down to shape. And you can see I have different options for the types of shapes that I would like to insert. Another way to do that is to click on this little shape icon that's right here. If you're not sure what, it, what any of these icons do, all you have to do is hover over them and you'll kind of see a written, written words underneath it that show you or tell you what that icon is for. So the shape one is the one that has the circle right here on top of the square. So I tend to use these more than going to the menu just because it's faster. So I'm gonna click shape. I have those same options here as I had in that insert menu. And what I wanna do is I wanna put a cloud into my beach scene. So I'm gonna click cloud, kind of draw out my shape, put it here in the sky. It is movable. Um, you can change the colors, do all that fun stuff. We're not co covering that today in this session. But to insert a shape, you can go to insert, down to shape, or click this shape tool here. The next thing that I'm going to insert is a line. You're going to go back up to the top where it says insert, and then you would go down to line. And just like that shape button, we have options for the different kinds of lines that you can put into your Google Slides presentation. There is a shortcut for that as well. It's this line button right here next to our shape button. If I click this down arrow, you'll see again those same options popping up. So what I want to do is I just want a simple line. I'm going to click line. I'm just going to put kind of a stick here on my beach sign. And then you can see my line pop up there. Again, these are all um, things that you can format later on once that they are inserted into your screen. So we have our shape button. 
we have our line button. The next one we're going to talk about is how to insert that text. Again, we can go to insert. We can choose a text box from this menu. Or our shortcut button is a T with a box around it. So for text box. So I'm going to click that shortcut button. I have my little arrow or my plus sign, which tells me that I'm I've selected a tool and you can see it also highlighted up here kind of in a yellow color and I'm going to draw where I want my text box to be. So I'm going to put a text box inside this bubble so I can make my little bitmoji speaking. And then I'll type my message there. You may notice too, once I click on this image, all those formatting tools do apply on the top for me to format that text. Moving down that checklist, so we did shape, line, text, and the next thing that we are going to insert is an image. We can do that again by going to insert, image, and I see all my different options. If you have one on your computer, you can grab it from your computer. You can look on the web. If you have an image saved in your drive, your photos, that's all available to you as well. And this camera button will activate your, your um, camera on your computer. So that's what you would use if you wanted to take a selfie or if you wanted to hold up a physical object and take a picture of that object. The shortcut button for inserting an image is this little um, picture button here. I refer to it as the mountain button for the kids. Uh, if you click that drop down arrow, again, you are gonna see those exact same options. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna search the web for a picture to add to my scene here. And I'm gonna look for a sandcastle. And I wanna look for a sandcastle clip art instead of a realistic photo. You'll see lots and lots of options pop up over here. What this does is it opens up a Google ser image search for you. So I'm gonna click on this sandcastle and you'll see now that I have this insert blue box that just popped up. You can click on multiple pictures and insert multiple pictures as well. And you can also grab this picture and just drag it over to your scene too, if that's what you choose to do. I'm just gonna click on insert here and you'll see it pop up on my slide. It's gonna kind of go wherever it wants, but once it's on your, on your screen, you can go ahead and resize it and move it to wherever you see fit. So I'm gonna move it right here in the corner. The next thing we are going to cover is how to insert a video. We're going to go back up to this insert button. And this time we are going to go down to video. No shortcut key for this one, friends. When I click video, I have a couple different options. This search button right here is going to allow me to search YouTube for a video inside of this box. If you have a video on your drive, you can pull it up from there, or if you ha already have a URL to a video from another website, you can copy it and paste it here. Right now, I'm just gonna look for a YouTube video on how to build a sandcastle. I have lots of options that pop up. Once you know which video that you would like to insert, you can click on the video and check select. Kind of like the image, it's gonna pop up wherever it wants. You'll have to resize it and put it wherever you see best fit. <clears throat> when you insert a video, it is going to pop up like this. So you're gonna actually see it on your screen. There's another way to insert a video if you don't wanna see it on your screen, kind of like this YouTube thumbnail right here. You can do that by creating a link. If you wanna create a link, you have to link the link to an object. So what I need to do is first figure out what I want to link my link to. I'm going to put, I want to attach a video to my sandcastle. So I have to first click on my sandcastle. You'll notice when I click on my sandcastle, I'm going to get additional options up here. So now I've got some more formatting options. So something that I can do, um, I first need to get the video URL from here. So I already have this pulled up on YouTube. I'm gonna go to YouTube and copy and paste 
Oops. I'm gonna copy and paste that link. And now what I wanna do is attach it to my sandcastle. One way to do that is to go to insert and I can go down here to link. You may also notice some of these have shortcut keys. So those are not on your outline for today, but those are additional ways too that you can um, manipulate your Google Slides presentation. There is a shortcut key for inserting a link and that is up here. Let me click on my castle again. And there's this little kind of chain link right here. So if I click this, a box will pop up for me to paste that link into. I paste it here and hit apply. So now, oops, now what happens is when somebody's in my presentation, they can see that this is linked to the sandcastle, but only when they click on it. So that's kind of a nice way to hide those videos. You can also link objects to something else. So I could link my cloud to, let me go back to link, another slide in the presentation. So if I wanted it so that when my students were going through this presentation, if they clicked on the cloud, it can bring them directly to slide three or slide 37 once I have that slide in my presentation. So that's kind of a nice way to link objects to another another slide. This is kind of ways that we build Jeopardy games and um, how to choose or how to choose your own adventure, those types of games. They are built by linking slides. Okay, last thing. Um, Let's say you put something on your on your screen, you don't like where it is, you wanna get rid of it, we delete it. All you have to do is click on that object and hit your backspace button, it disappears. Another way to delete an object is to click on it and then right click and then choose cut. Another way is to click on the object, go to edit and cut there. So again, um, friends, no right way, no wrong way. Um, do what best suits you. Okay, so I think we've covered everything possible that we can insert onto a slide. We are gonna move on quickly to slide number two, which is a, a, blank, a blank slide. What I'm gonna do here is insert a diagram. So again, we're staying up there in that insert button. If you are in slides two, this is just a side note and you don't see this options or these this toolbar up here. If you see this little up arrow in the right corner, it might be that they're hidden. So if you ever see that and you can't find those buttons on the top, just a little FYI, it could be that they're hidden. So I'm gonna open this back up. All right, back to the diagrams. We are gonna go to insert again, down to diagram, no shortcut key for this either. When I click diagram, Google's going to provide me with some options here, the different kinds of diagrams that I can insert. You can make these on your own completely by scratch by doing inserting shapes and inserting lines, but that could get quite tedious. So if there's one here that you like, I like this hierarchy one, I would click on this. And then I do have some options to change the levels of that. I'll change it to four and I'll make it a different color. We'll go with pink. So then when I click on that option, you'll see that there's kind of a hierarchy put in here for me. And then you can edit this to edit the words that are in here, edit the lines once it's already on your slide. Todd, um, I'm going to move on to something else. Is there anything, any questions that I can cover about inserting anything onto a slides presentation? Yeah, I got two quick things if you could show. Uh... Same as yesterday, people really like those backgrounds you found. Um, mm -hmm. so you first show just how you insert uh, them. Um, and I found some new. Um, a, give me um, a second. Yeah. Uh, for pizza, I found some new stuff, so I'm all excited about it. I'm going to make it. Yeah, yeah, I have everything. But mostly I found the, uh-oh, wait a minute. Hold on, what happened? What? All right. Thank all right, you for <laughs> OK. Um, Say that again, sorry, Todd. So could you just show how you insert the background first? Yep. <clears throat> I made this background image. That's something your tech integrator can show you how to do and how to get that on the back of a slide. But if there's just something you wanna take a picture of or put as a background, you would just click this background button here. I think it's also under insert. Nope, I lied. 
you would hit the background button and then you have the option to put in a solid color or um, a gradient kind of color background. If you have an image already, you could put an image in there. So if you have one saved on your computer, you could upload it, um, grab it from your camera, your drive, or you can then reset it back to whatever your theme was for that presentation. The other area, Catherine, it's under is slide. So if you go to that menu and press slide, you can change background. Ah, yeah, there it was. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so slides and then change background. Change yeah. background. And then um, kind of on that same subject with your pictures, is there a, a source you like to utilize to find those backgrounds and pictures that you put in there? Google. So this one, I, I simply just grabbed a beach theme and then I added some things to it. So again, this is something that um, I know any of your tech grader integrators can do and we'd be happy to work with you on how to customize all this stuff. Yeah, and there is a, I know there was a question out there about kind of using Google images. And when you get into Google and we can, um, I, I would say check with your tech integrator on this, but there are ways where you can search for pictures that you are able to reuse and able to reuse with changing. And they could show you that. Um, it's just some of the different search features you can use when you're on a Chrome browser. But to stay on slides right now, we don't want to jump <laughs> over that topic. So otherwise, Perfect. Catherine, I think we're good to go. OK, let's move on to slide number three. And we are going to talk about all the different ways to arrange your objects. So what I did here is I put the image that's on my background is just the little cityscape that's there. Um, it had the street, it had the pond. What I added are cars on the wrong side of the street, somebody brought to my attention, and a boat, and a cloud, and my little bird friends, and I added my little ducks down here. So the rest of this stuff is, oops, the rest of this stuff is, it's kind of stuck. I'm clicking, I can't do anything with these houses because it's already the background. So the only images that I can manipulate and move are the ones that I put on top. Google Slides is a lot like PowerPoint. If you use that, it's created in layers. So the first thing that's on my slide or on the bottom of my slide, if you will, is that background. And then as I put objects on, they are actually on top of one another. So I have a, I have a car here, a yellow one and a blue one. You know that I put the yellow one on after because it's on top of the blue one, if you can see that. So again, Slides works in many layers. The first thing that we are gonna arrange once you would have all of your objects on your slides presentation, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna center something. So I'm gonna take my cute little boat here and I wanna center it to the exact middle of my pond. Again, if you, if you look at my menu across the top now, it's different than if I click on the actual object. When you click on the object, you are gonna see more options here. So when you're in slides if you if you're freaking out because you can't see the options more than likely it's because you forgot to click on that object first so my slides or i'm sorry my boat i want to put to the middle of my slide i'm going to go up to the top click arrange and then all i want to do is center it on my page i can center it horizontally or vertically i'm going to go horizontally so it's in my pond if you wanted to put it dead center of your slide you would center it horizontally and then vertically and it would put it in the exact center of your slide the next thing we're going to do is distribute the cars evenly so right now i kind of have a traffic jam on my left side of my slides presentation and i want them all to be completely evenly spaced so to do this i have to click on my car and when you notice when i click on another car it's going to unclick the first one or the last one so what I need to do is I need to group all of these together. So to do that, I'm going to click on my first object. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then click on any other object that I want in that group. So I'm going to group all of my cars together. You know they're grouped because they have this light blue. I know it's hard to see here, but there's this light blue box around each object. And then all of the objects are surrounded by this darker blue box here. So once all of your objects are selected, we would go back up to this arrange button. This is gonna be our favorite button for this slide. And this time we are gonna go down to distribute. And again, I wanna distribute them horizontally. So now you can see my cars are evenly spaced. I no longer have that traffic jam on the left side. Let's pretend now that I wanna make my, right, or my red car not going to the right, but facing the other direction. 
So to change it or to rotate it, I would click on my car or my object. I'm going to right click and then go to rotate. So I can rotate it kind of clockwise, counterclockwise, or I can flip it. I'm gonna flip it horizontally. And now you can see that it's on the wrong side of the road again, um, but it's going, it's facing the opposite direction. I was mentioning earlier how things are put in, in layers into Google Slides. So you can see here that I have a bird and I also have a cloud. I put my bird in first, then I put my cloud in. You may end up layering a lot of objects in and then realize you put your, your bird in first, but you wanted it on top of your cloud. You do not have to go and delete anything, but you just need to reorder what, what layer your images are in. So to do that, what I wanna do is I want, I want my bird back here to be in the front or on that topmost layer. So you're gonna click your object that's there. We're gonna right click on our object. And now we have this option to order. So if I order it, what I want to do, what I want to do is bring it to the very front or top, if you will, of the slide, that top layer. Now you can see that it just kind of took my bird, brought him from behind that cloud up to that, that front layer or that top layer. If you want to move a whole group of things similar to how I kind of just redistributed my cars. Let's say you want to move them all together at one time. You would use that shift button to grab each object and group them together again. So I'm going to click on my ducks. I'm going to click on this big one. I'm going to hold shift. And then I'm going to click on my little babies. I'm going to click on my ugly duckling. Now they're all in what is it, a temporary group. So if I click off of them, it's gonna ungroup them and they're gonna stay separate images, five separate images. But if I right click on this group, I have the option now to group. Once I group them, it's gonna put them all into one group. You can kind of see I have one big group here and then I can move that group wherever I wanna move them. So I'm gonna put them on this side of the boat. All right, there you have it. Arrange button, lots of different ways to do that. Anytime you need to arrange an image, more than likely you're gonna find it in this arrange button up here or extra options always come from right clicking. So you would click on that option, right click and you'll get some additional options too. Last slide. All right, I created this kind of pop art image here with some shapes in the background. All I did was put four different squares on there and change the color. And then I took my Bitmoji and copy and pasted it um, into each square. What we're gonna wanna do with these images is we're gonna talk about cropping and adjusting these images. When it comes time to adjust an image, you have to first click on it. Again, I'm getting additional options up here. And I can either go to format and then click on my format options. Or if I click on it, there is a shortcut key that will pop up here. So once I click on it, I can click on format options here in this toolbar. I have a lot of them. I'm not going to talk about all of them today for the sake of time. Um, but I am going to talk about recoloring. So right now, this is the original Bitmoji color that I have. But if I want to make it more pop artish, you can see I get these other kind of crazy options that pop up down here. I'm going to make this person blue. And then now I've recolored her. Um, the recoloring tool that's there, those are the only options that are available to you. Another way to format your, your images is again to click on them. I'm going to go back to format options. And instead of recoloring, I may want to just make some adjustments to what's here. So you can change the transparency. Right now, it's not transparent, it's a solid object. But as I go to the right more, it's gonna become a little bit more see-through the further I drag it to the right. So maybe I just wanna see a little bit of blue behind me. I can click on another object or the same one. You can change the brightness. Or you can also change the contrast too.
once you have all of your images adjusted so that you're happy with them, um, you may want to do a, a little bit more or you may want part of an image. So I have my Bitmoji over here. She's saying, hi, I really like this picture. And let's say I want to use the picture of, of um, my Bitmoji, but I don't want this high to be showing up. In order to crop an image, you would simply just double click on it. You're going to see that my blue box, when I double click, becomes black kind of in the corners. These are going to allow you to drag them from the corner or the sides and crop out what you'd like to crop out. Another way to do that is to click on your image, go up to the top, and we have a crop image button right here. If I click on it, I'll then get those black button or those black bars as well. So I'm going to drag these down kind of try to cut that high out as best as I can. Once I'm happy, I'm just gonna click enter. You can see now that that's all gone. I'm gonna make myself a little bit bigger. If you find that you crop too much, I, you can double click on that image and it's actually still kind of there. So you can, you can um, bring it back if you do crop it out, it's not forever lost. All right, last thing we're gonna talk about before we um, move on to Todd's part of the presentation is how to add additional slides and remove them and organize them. So I have four slides currently. To add a new slide, I'm simply gonna just click this plus button up here in the left corner. And I'll have a new slide there to work with. If you decide you don't want that slide or if I don't want any of these other slides, all you need to do is click on that slide you can right click and cut it, you can go to edit and cut, or you can just hit backspace, which is I'm, what I'm going to do now. It's gone. Another option that you might wanna have is to actually duplicate a slide. So maybe I wanna make two beach scenes. So I first have to click on the slide that I would like to duplicate. I would right click on that slide and then hit duplicate. So now you can see I have two of the exact same. I'm gonna delete this extra one. You can also go up to edit and hit duplicate there or use the shortcut keys that are listed in this menu. Last thing to talk about is how to organize them. Once you've built your slides presentation, if you don't like the order that it's in, you would simply click a slide and drag it holding your mouse to a different location. And you can see my location by looking at that yellow bar that's popping up besides um, between slides one and two right now, once I let it go, it's going to go back there. If I want to put it back down, I'm going to click and simply just drag it right back to the bottom. All right, Todd, that was so much. I know a lot of information. Again, use these outlines that we gave you to help you and um, feel free to relook or take a second look at this video once we send that to you as well. Todd, is there anything that I've missed on slides before we continue to drive? Nope, you're good to go. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, if you could just bear with us for a minute while we um, swap screens, that would be great. Christy, yes, you can delete instead of cut. All right, can you see my screen okay, Catherine? Yes, I can. All right, so this is the drive area that we're going to be working out of for the second part of the presentation. I did want to show you, though, before we start there, a couple of ways you could get to drive. So I'm going to go to google.com to kind of show you that. And so first, when we're working out of Google, uh, we can see that if we are on the web page google.com, next to my Bitmoji, there is that waffle icon. So in that waffle icon, we could get to slides like Catherine was just talking about. We can get to the drive folder as well. So we'll be looking at that next. So that would be one way that you can get to this item. The other way that you can get there is by going to the Omni box up here. And I know Catherine mentioned this in the beginning. Uh, just remember that in this Omni box, you can type in websites, you can search for questions. So I could type in there, what is ancient Egypt and find out some information that way. So it has a search feature to it as well. And so this is a way we can get to different items. So if I try type in uh, drive.google.com, I would be able to get to my Google Drive. Okay, so you can see now it's open in two tabs because I opened it from Google as well. 
I'm actually going to go to the other one just for the purpose of today's training. Uh, when you look at the second bullet point on our outline, it says, what is Google Drive? And really, Google Drive is kind of that one-stop shop area where you can find all of the different items that you're working on, whether they're items you've created or items that have been shared with you. Um, on that outline, we did link in an introduction video to uh, Google Drive. Please feel free to watch that if you have time. It is a little bit older, but it just talks about the idea of why we would use Google Drive to collaborate and store our items. So working in the district, we have a Google Drive that actually has unlimited storage, which is nice. Uh, so you can get a lot of different items in there um, over a certain amount of time. So it's a really nice way to store things and, and keep items in a way that you would like them. And hopefully today we'll show you a little bit of how you can try and keep that drive organized as you're working with it. So first we'll show you the area that you can create a new file in your drive. And so Google tries to make that pretty well known that it's right here if you click the new button you can decide that you would like to create a new item. And so we could create a new file, and I'll click this more just so you can see. You can create a doc, a slides presentation, you can even get into Google Drawings and other items as well. And so what's cool about Google products, and we'll work with slides because that's what Catherine was just on, is if I click on this arrow, I would have the opportunity from my drive to make a blank slides presentation or I could click on make a template. It would open up some templates that are created for Google and I could use one of those to get started. Uh, so if you're someone who feels like this is a view you like, you could do a lot of your work out of here because you can also find that waffle icon to go back to your email or go to other items as well. So I can create new files here. I can also get to those programs again with that waffle icon. When I'm in my drive, I can press the new button to create a new folder and put items in there uh, that I would like to help keep organized. So we'll make one for this class. And I clicked the wrong spot right there. Um, so I'm going to click new and create folder. And when I create a folder, I'm just going to put um, 49 and then practice. So we kind of get it towards the top. And I'm going to click create. And so you can now see that because I did it with a number, it's towards the top uh, of my screen and I have this folder now created to start putting items in. If I double click on that folder with my trackpad, we can see that there is nothing in there right now. When I'm looking at my drive, I can see the folders here. I can also click on the little arrow to the left. When I do that, that would be another area that I can see all of my folders. And a lot of people really like this view because it allows you to drag and drop items from this side into your folders. So if you had a doc that you wanted to go into the Ranky folder, I could click and drag and drop it in here uh, and start to get organized. Once we start to create files and folders, those appear in my drive, but recently Google's added an area called the priority area. And many of you might notice that the priority area is the area that your Google Drive defaults to. And it is a nice way be, um, to kind of go to first because it does stay organized. So in my priority area, I would see at the top uh, Google recognizes files that I've opened or files that I've created. Uh, sometimes it might be even files that I've opened a couple times over the past few weeks. And they'll put those up here for me to get easy or quick access to. Additionally, Google has a nice feature in this priority area where you can create workspaces. And these workspaces would be items that you open quite a bit that you want to find right away. So Catherine and I have obviously been working on these trainings a lot. So if I wanted to, I could create a workspace for our trainings and put all of the items in here that I want to be able to open quickly. And so when I create a workspace, and let's actually do social studies, I can click create. 
and Google will allow me to start to add files. What's really cool is if I would enter in a, a folder name that Google recognizes I have items I might want to put in, it will actually put some of those documents at the top and allow me to add it to the workspace. Since I put in social studies and it's not recognizing any items that I might want in there, I would just press add files. Google would pull up my recent items. I could even go into my drive uh, and look for items that I want to add in this workspace. So for right now, I'll just put the outline that Catherine and I shared with our docs and Gmail group earlier today, and I'll press insert. And so now I can see that that file is part of my social studies workspace for quick access. I can add up to 25 items, um, and I can click add files here to do that. But just for the purpose of time, I'll press done, and you can see now this workspace has been created and when you're working in Google, one thing to note, whether it's slides or whether it's Drive, you'll often see three dots that appear. Those three dots are just a nice thing to explore as you're practicing with these different programs because as you can see here, they pull up a big menu of items that you would have available to you and you might not even be aware that some of these functions or capabilities exist. So as you practice with slides, as you're working in Gmail, if you ever see those three dots, those are a good thing to explore just to familiarize yourself with that program and what Google makes available to you. So in the work of, I guess you would say, being efficient, that priority area can be pretty helpful. When you are working on a file or even a folder, you can click on the folder, and when I have it highlighted, I can right click on it to get those different options we talked about, or as I mentioned, those three dots, those appear here in Drive. I can click on those three dots and see some of the same options. When I'm working with a folder or a file, one thing that I like to do is add it to the start area if it's something that I feel like is important. If I click on the Add to Starred, you'll see a star that appears. So I know this is Starred, I know it's important to me. And then what I can do is I can go down here on this left side of my Google Drive to Starred, and I would see all of the different items that I view as important. Uh, it's kind of almost like that priority area, but it's another way for me to find items quickly that I want to look at. And it can even be things that were shared with me. So maybe Catherine shared something with me, and she actually did. She shared this meet recordings with me. I thought it was important, so I started uh, to be able to find it a little bit quicker. So that might help you stay organized. Another way you can stay organized with folders is if you click on them, you can go to those three dots or right click and you can change the color of the folder. So maybe you really like color coding your items. You click on change color and we'll just pick a greenish color for today. And I can see now that we have that green color for our practice folder that we've created. As we move down our outline, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is uh, the file or folder with three dots. And this is how we can add items to our folder and move them around if we'd like to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and just to find a file at the bottom of my folders here. And so we're going to just take one of these meeting items that I've created in the past. And so you can see that I have this Google Doc, and I decide that I might want to move it to a different folder, and we'll move it to that practice folder we uh, created. So I could right-click on it. I could click the three dots to get those options as well. When I right-click on it, I can choose to move this item. So if I press Move to a list of my different items or folders in my drive will pull up. If I click the back arrow, I could even decide that I want to move this to my shared drives and other areas. You see that starred folder popping up again. But I'm just going to pick my drive for today, double click, and when I double click, now I see my folders. And so we have this practice item that's been created. I'm going to move this file here. I'm going to double click on it and click move here. So now when I go up to that folder, 
the 49 practice. I can see that that file has been moved here. Now, if I would like to, I can also drag and drop this file. Uh, so that might be a little bit more efficient for you. There are a couple ways to drag and drop. As I mentioned, the way I like to do it, there's this arrow. And maybe I decide now I want this 429 not to be in 49 practice. I want it to be in Ranky. I could click and hold with my mouse. And while I'm holding, oops, sorry, I can drag it into the folder that I want and we'll put it into Ranky. And now when I go into Ranky, I can see that I have some other folders and files and I could eventually find this 429 at the top. So that can make your life a little bit more efficient. You know, if you're working in this area and you like to drag and drop there, you can do that as well by dragging and dropping into folders in this workspace area. Again, you kind of do what works best for you and makes your life a little bit easier. Uh, and I just find it easier to drag to the left. For those of you who have a file and you want to put it into more than one folder, there are ways to do that. And that bonus idea on your outline explains it. And basically what I would do is I would hold the shift button and Z and it would allow me to kind of move that file into a folder and keep it where it is as well. So that's something to explore and test out if you think it would be valuable to the work that you're completing. As I work with my drive, I can also add new items. I don't just need to create them. So I'm going to press the new button and I can upload a file or I can upload a folder. So we'll start with a file. And my computer right now is defaulting to my desktop. And so it's on my desktop and actually my downloads folder. And I'm gonna upload a PDF for you. So I can upload this PDF that I have into my Google Drive for storage. So we can see on the right side that uploaded pretty quickly. And typically you'll find that Google uploads items in a quick manner. So once those items are uploaded, what I like to do is go to the recent tab and when I go to the recent tab, I can find that item very quickly at the top because it has been uploaded. And so once I find that file, then I could do what we just did. I could right click on it to move it, drag and drop it where I want it, uh, if that's something I would like to do. When you're uploading files, it can be PDFs, Microsoft Word documents, pictures, almost anything you really want to store within your Google Drive. And remember, you do have that unlimited storage being part of the district, so that can be helpful. Again, I could go to the new button, I could click a folder upload, and maybe I find that I have some items from my music that I want to upload in that folder. I can click upload. It has 23 files in it, so I'll click upload. You'll see that those music files will start to upload into my drive, and it's going pretty quick. It says less than a minute left if it doesn't get stuck, and you can see that those are starting to go here. And so that folder will eventually show up in my drive. I'm going to click cancel for right now and close this out. Okay. And I could go through if I wanted to. I could highlight all of those. And let's just say that I don't want those items. I could hold the shift button and press up. Get all of those files. Hit the recycle button. And they'd be sent to my Google Drive trash. And once it's in my trash, I could go to the upper right corner and empty my trash, maybe because I uploaded things I didn't want. Uh, maybe I'm just trying to get more organized and get some of the files out of there. If I'm working with my drive and I open a folder, we'll open this practice one, I can make my browser a little bit smaller. We'll close this. And when that browser is a little bit smaller, I can take files and drag them and drop them as well. So I could do that with a folder or a file. Just for purposes of time, I'll show you a file. I'm going to drag and drop my Walden logo. And I can see that I clicked on my trackpad, held down, dragged it in, and now Walden picture is part of my practice folder. So that can be a nice feature if you're trying to get your desktop or your downloads uh, set up in a manner that 
you can um, get items in there. And, or if you feel like you just have too much stuff on your desktop and you want to get organized, you could make a folder. And this is what I do called 2020 Desktop. I put all of my items that are on my desktop that I don't necessarily need and store them in Drive just in case I want to come back to them at some point. Okay. So that drag and drop feature can be pretty beneficial. So we just uploaded recent uh, a PDF. And what I wanted to let you know is that if you work with PDFs a lot, or maybe let's say Microsoft Word, Google does have some settings where you can try and convert those items into a Google Doc, a Google Slide, a Google Spreadsheet. And so what you can do uh, are two things. The first one that you could do is go to the settings gearbox and you could set it up in your settings so that every time Google tries to upload uh, an item that let's say is a Microsoft Word file, it'll try and convert it into a Google Doc. Or if it's a Microsoft Excel file, it'll try and convert it into Sheets. So you can set it up so it automatically does that. I typically don't like that. I would rather manually do it, um, and I'll show you that step next. One thing I would just mention, too, there are some settings in here that you can always explore. Uh, remember that Gearbox is a nice thing to explore in any Google product that it might pop up in. Okay. So now if I want to manually convert something, and this is the option that I like, what I usually do is highlight the file, and I could right-click on it or press those three dots. And I have a feature called Open With. And so for this PDF, Google is recommending that I want to try and open it with Google Docs. So I'm going to press that. And what will happen is Microsoft uh, Doc or a PDF will then be converted into a doc. And so you can see that it's recognizing this pretty well. But what I would just kind of tell you a little word of warning, if you're converting a PowerPoint into a slides presentation, or a PDF, it doesn't always match exactly. And um, if I show you real quick, this is how the file would look if it was actually a Google Doc. But when that conversion happens, it doesn't bring everything in that you need. So it might take some editing, but it is a nice feature because it can make your life a little easier and not having to redo everything. Okay. Just as I could within a Google Doc, uh, I can use my drive as a way to share files. And so I have this highlighted. I have this little guy here that I can press to share it out. And in this area, I have different sharing settings that are available to me. So I could share out the link to that file. I could type in someone's name and share it that way. Uh, so you can utilize Drive. Again, it's kind of that one-stop shop if you know where things are to you know, share those items out uh, with other people. You can also share out folders if it's a folder you want to collaborate on. I know there are a lot of you out there who use the Share Drives feature as a way to collaborate. Uh, sometimes we find that to be a little better uh, as a way because you can access files. They stay there even if the person leaves. That's the owner and that kind of thing. So it's just a nice uh, area to explore as well when you get into that collaboration. In the sharing feature, if I click on this file, uh, there are options too where I can share it um, by getting the link. And so if I click on the file, I can click on my three dots. Um, and I should be able to find the shareable link when I press the share button, actually. So I misspoke for a second there. I'll press the share button. And down here, I can get the shareable link. So what I would do is press get the link ready. And then once I have this link, I can copy the link uh, to send it out to people as well. Again, that shared drive is a nice area to collaborate on. So when we click on shared drive, you can see all the different groups that I work with uh, sharing our items out. Uh, and it just makes life pretty easy as you go through and uh, collaborate together on folders and different items within your drive. You'll see at the end of this outline, we do have another video. Again, feel free to check that out. But it just gives a quick summary of how Google intends that you can collaborate on different items together when you're using Drive. 
So these are all of the basics we have and wanted to go over with you for Google Drive. Uh, Catherine, is there anything that you think I missed or questions that I can share? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I'm all caught up in the chat. Um, if I missed it for some reason, feel free to either type it again or turn your mic on and um, ask the question um, as soon as Todd is done showing you the last thing he has to show you. Awesome. Thank you. All right.